Welcome, friends. It looks like it's time for us to get started. So uh, hopefully you're signed in and can leave some comments tonight. I hope the exam went well. I have spent, I think, uh, over four hours grading my question on the telescoping series. So I, I'm afraid to say you're not going to get that back for a while until after the strike is over. But those of, those of us who can grade have been grading quite a bit. So uh, we're going to talk today about Taylor series. And I want to go through and build one uh, completely from the beginning to the end. And then we'll see how we're doing once we get there. So we have some favorite functions, and we'll list them all here shortly. But I want to start with the notion of cosine. And I want to build a Taylor series and find its interval of convergence. And then we'll uh, see where we go from there. OK, that's bleeding through. So we're going to take a look at f of x is cosine x. Our goal is to construct a Taylor series centered at zero. When we say series, that means infinite number of terms. We've done Taylor polynomials quite a bit. We certainly can do Taylor polynomials of any size. But again, we want these things to be infinitely large. That's going to be our goal. So let's go through and uh, do our various values. f of x is cos x prime of x is minus sine x, f double prime of x is minus cos x, f double prime of x is minus minus sine x, that would make it sine x, f quadruple prime of x is cos x, f fifth derivative of x is minus sine x, and f sixth derivative of x is minus cos x. We are centering this at zero. Now, just keep in mind, if I have a Taylor series centered at zero, it's also called a Maclaurin series. You may see that term. A Maclaurin series is a Taylor series centered at zero. So I, I typically don't use that term very often. I'll just go ahead and call it a Taylor series centered at zero. Anyway, f of x is cos x. So f of zero is the cosine of zero, which is one f prime of zero is minus the sine of zero, which is zero. f double prime of zero is minus the cos of zero, which is minus one. f triple prime of zero is the sine of zero, which is zero. f quadruple prime of zero is the cos of zero, which is one. Fifth derivative of zero, negative sine of zero is zero. Six derivative of zero, negative cos of zero is negative one. Now, this can go on and on and on and on. So we need to keep all of those straight. I'm going to try to remind myself of those things. But then I also want to list what the series is going to look like. Um, so let's see how I can do that. I'm going to slide that over a little bit. And then we'll talk about what that Taylor series, that Maclaurin series will look like. So P of X is A naught plus A one X plus A two X squared plus A three X cubed plus A four X to the fourth plus A five X to the fifth. And that's all you can see on your screen. So I guess I'll stop there and then we'll look for a pattern. P of zero is a sub zero, because that's zero, 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 zero. F of zero is one. So a sub zero is one. P prime of x is a one plus two a two x plus three a three x squared plus four a four x cubed plus six a five x to the fifth plus dot, dot, dot. So if that's the case, then where are we? Uh, P prime of zero is A1. F prime of zero was zero, so A1 is zero. P double prime of X, 2A2 plus 
6a3x plus 12a4x squared plus 30a5x to the fifth plus dot, dot, dot. P double prime of zero is 2a2. F double prime of zero is negative one. 2a2 is negative one, a2 is negative one half. P triple prime of x is 6a3 plus 24a4x plus, this I think should be a four, I made a mistake there. Four times 30 is 120. That's a three is what it is. <laughs> One, two, three, this should have been a four. So this should be 24 a five X cubed. Sorry about that. A lot of moving parts here. Anyway, we're gonna cut to the chase. P triple prime of zero is six A three. F triple prime of zero is zero. So A three is zero. P quadruple prime of X is 24 a four you're starting to see a pattern this is four factorial this is three factorial this is two factorial uh f quadruple prime of zero is one so a four is one twenty fourth yeah no lecture tomorrow due to the uh, strike so i still hope that this thing is going to get resolved but uh no we're going to go ahead and replace tomorrow's lecture with this okay so the fifth derivative of x or of zero actually is what i want to say of zero is going to be five factorial a5 and f5 of zero so a5 is zero and then p6 P6 of zero is six factorial A6. F6 of zero is negative one. So A6 is negative one over six factorial. So we have all this stuff. This stuff should help me indeed get my Taylor series. So remember what it was. Our polynomial that's gonna define this, our P of X, which is the same as the Taylor series of X, is A naught plus A1X plus A2X squared plus A3X cubed plus dot, 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 fine. So what do we have? P of X, which is the Taylor series of X. A1 is one plus zero X minus one half X squared plus zero X to the third plus 124th x to the fourth, plus zero x to the fifth, minus one over six factorial x to the sixth, plus dot, dot, dot. So let's focus on this and let's go ahead and describe this if we can. So I've got all those zeros which are going to go away, I'm gonna start calling this T of X for my Taylor series. One minus a half X squared or X squared over two, plus X to the fourth over 24, minus X to the sixth over six factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. It goes on forever, it is a series. And that's two factorial, that's four factorial. So let's write this again this way, one minus, x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Yes, indeed, 18 dedicated people. Thank you for being here tonight, the last day before spring break, but I appreciate your conscientiousness. Okay, so I wanna express this in sigma notation. Remember, what was this? This was an approximation for cosine x. So the Taylor series for cosine x is going to be the sum of what? Even numbers, even numbers. So that's going to be 2k 
factorial downstairs starting when k equals zero. Remember, zero factorial is one. Even numbers upstairs. So again, x to the 2k. And then what can we say we're going to get? We have a sign flasher that starts out positive. So I have negative one, it starts out positive. So I think it'll be negative one to the k, negative one to the zero is one. And then it becomes negative, negative one to the first is negative, then negative one to the second is positive, x to the four over four factorial, et cetera. So I believe that's what we have. So what we're saying then is, is we're saying cosine x can be expressed as an infinite sum, i.e. a series, i.e. a Taylor series, centered where? Centered at zero, because that's x minus zero. So cosine x is the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the k, x to the 2k over 2k factorial. Okay, so using that, I want to ask you the following question. Can you answer this for me? And I'd like you to put your answer in the comments. Evaluate the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k pi to the 2k over 3 to the 2k times 2k factorial. So look at what you have. We have this definition, and then I've rewritten a question this way. Can I this and tell me what that thing has to sum to? So I'll give you a minute and see what you can do. So go ahead and write your answer in the comments when you have it. 21 dedicated people now, hopefully one person or two, will give us an answer. What does P of X represent? Well, I call that a polynomial. We did Taylor polynomials before. So we would give them a certain order. We'd say construct a Taylor polynomial of order five. Well, I'm moving from polynomials to series. So it's a polynomial of infinite degree. That's why I went ahead and I moved to T of X to call it that for my Taylor series. But then we're expressing cosine x as that Taylor series. Okay, do I have anybody that is willing to put an answer on the comments? I know it's hard, the last lecture before spring break, the first lecture after an exam. Maybe that's not fair for me to ask that question. But I'll give it another 30 seconds or so. We'll see who will get an A for the day for uh, trying to give me an answer to this. Must I give another hint? I'm certainly capable of giving another hint. Sum as k goes from zero. No, I don't want to, I don't want you to prove if it converges. We can do that to look at the um, interval of convergence, but I want to know what that is. Assuming this is in the um, interval of convergence, what will this be? So I'll, I'll give you another hint. Here we go. Negative one to the k pi over three to the two K. Notice what I've done, I have pi to the two K upstairs, I have three to the two K downstairs. So that's pi over three to the two K. Is that enough to get us an answer? I wanna make sure you're looking at this. So cosine x is the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the k, x to the two k over two k factorial. I have negative one to the k pi over three to the two k over two k factorial. All right, Azad has an answer of cosine of pi over three. Uh, Michael has an answer of cosine pi over three. Very good, do we know what cosine of pi over three is? Who knows what cosine of pi over three is? Masaki also agrees. As does Farouk. But what is cosine of pi over three? Who knows the answer? Cosine of 60 degrees is how much? There we go, one half, very good. Um, now the question came up though, during the, the working of that problem in terms of what is the interval of convergence for that Taylor series. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the ratio test to determine where it converges. So let's move on. So what we have here, 
is this. We have cosine x is that, and the goal is use the ratio test. to find the interval of convergence. Now, remember the ratio test is a test of absolute convergence. If a series is absolutely convergent, convergent, it is automatically convergent. So we've got to play our game. We've got to take a look at absolute value of a sub k. Right now we have a sub k is this, is negative 1 to the k, x to the 2k over 2k factorial. So if I jump to the absolute value of a sub k, the negative one goes away. That becomes the absolute value of x, could be positive or negative, to the 2k over 2k factorial. But if I am using the ratio test, I also need a sub k plus 1. So that's my next line. What is the absolute value of a sub k plus 1? I replace the k's with k plus 1, so I have absolute x, 2, k plus 1 over two times k plus one factorial. And the ratio test requires me to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus one divided by a sub k. Limit as k goes to infinity, and I'm sorry we're in a shadow there, limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub k plus one over a sub k. which is the limit as k goes to infinity of this divided by this. So that's the absolute value of x. Now notice x to the 2k plus 1 is x 2 times k plus 1, 2k plus 2. And down here, 2k plus 1 factorial is 2k plus 2 factorial. So let's think of it that way. So we're going to take a look at x to the 2k plus 2 over 2k plus 2 factorial divided by absolute x to the 2k over 2k factorial. Now this gets tricky, so we have to invert and multiply. So we'll take the limit as k goes to infinity of absolute x to the 2k plus 2 over 2k plus 2 factorial times 2k factorial over x to the 2k. Take a look at that for a second. And I want you to think about how the algebra is going to work here. When I reduce this fraction, I will have x to the 2k plus 2 divided by x to the 2k. What do I have left upstairs? Masaki's giving me the right answer. I have 2k factorial and I have 2k plus 2 factorial downstairs. Now think about what 2k plus 2 factorial means. It's 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 times 2k times 2k minus 1, etc. So maybe I need to show you that if I can. So just to kind of, again, just to kind of think about this for a second. 2k factorial means 2k, 2k minus 1, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. Whereas 2k plus 2 factorial means 2k plus 2, drop it 1, 2k plus 1, 2k, 2k minus 1, 3, 2, 1. I don't know what you that you can see, because you can see most of it. Um, so everything cancels out except for the 2k plus 2 and the 2k plus 1. Notice 2k, 2k, boom, boom, all that goes away. All that's left is 2k plus 2, 2k plus 1 downstairs. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limb as k goes to infinity. x to the 2k plus 2x to the 2k leaves absolute value of x squared. Subtract the exponents. 
Downstairs, I have 2K plus 2, 2K plus 1. What is happening here is that K is changing. K is changing, so I can pull this out in front of the limit operator, and I get absolute value of X squared times the lim as K goes to infinity of 1 over 2K plus 2, 2K plus 1. Well, as K goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So this limit is absolute value of x squared times 0, which equals 0. Remember, we were doing the ratio test. That is less than 1. If the limit with the ratio test is less than 1, what do we know? Conclude. The original series converges for all values of x. So the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity. Which is very nice. So there are three favorite Taylor series, or actually McLaurin series, that we're always going to want to use. And they're almost worth memorizing. So I've just done cosine x here for you. Let's talk about sine and e to the x, which I've looked at earlier. So these are our favorite series. And let's build that um, sigma notation. So e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot, 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 infinite series. So what does that Taylor series become? You'll notice we have x to the number over the number factorial. Does that work for all of them? Is it x to the k over k factorial? k starts at 0. Let's see. So what we have here is we have x to the 0 over 0 factorial is 1, x to the 1 over 1 factorial. So that looks good for e to the x. The interval of convergence for e to the x is minus infinity to infinity. So that's one that I want you to know. Now, I'm going to ask you a question to see if you can do this. Yes, the exam will take a bit longer to grade. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead and construct a Taylor series centered at 0. For g of x equals e to the negative x squared. Okay, so my suggestion is first write out a few terms and then express it in sigma form. Okay, so see what you can do. See if you can give me a Taylor series for e to the negative x squared. Hint replace all of the x's with negative x squared. Give me a few terms and then see if you can write it in this form. So I'll give you a chance. Yeah, we're grading like crazy. Uh, like I said, I spent about five hours today, but we're only going to grade half the exam. We cannot do the teaching assistant's work. And uh, when they get back, they'll finish grading it. I don't know what the plan is to get what back to you, but uh, we can see how things are going to go. Again, Taylor series for e to the negative x squared. Write out the first few terms and write out a uh, sigma notation, please. See what you get. And e to the negative x squared is the basis of the bell curve that we use in statistics. So it is one of the most important functions, and it is impossible to integrate. It's impossible to integrate. 
So let me go ahead and show you my thoughts on this. Replace every x with negative x squared. So it's e to the, I'm going to get in that shadow zone. I'd like to see it, though. e to the negative x squared equals 1, replace x with negative x squared, minus x squared, plus replace x with negative x squared, negative x squared squared over 2 factorial plus, negative x squared to the third over 3 factorial plus, negative x squared to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, let's simplify this if we can. What is that going to give me? e to the negative x squared equals 1 minus x squared. A negative squared is positive plus x to the fourth over 2 factorial. Negative x squared to the third is minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial plus x to the eighth over 4 factorial. So there's the first few terms of e to the negative x squared. And I believe I can express that in sigma notation and see what we get. So let's go ahead and do that. What is e to the negative x squared? Sum again as k goes from 0 to infinity. Downstairs, I think we just have k factorial. Upstairs, we have all positive numbers, x to the 0, x to the 2nd, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, x to the 8th. That would be x to the 2k. And then I have a sign flasher. I have a negative 1 to what power? Negative 1 to the 1, negative 1 to the 0, to the 2. Excuse me. Positive, negative, positive, negative. So negative 1 to the k starts out positive 0. The negative 1 to the 1 is negative. Negative 1 to the second is positive. Negative 1 to the third is negative. Negative 1 to the fourth is positive. So there we have our um, Taylor series expansion for e to the negative x squared. Now I will tell you for this, the interval of convergence is still going to be minus infinity to infinity. Now taking the derivative of e to the negative x squared is relatively easy. But taking the integral of e to the negative x squared is possible. So here's our idea. There is no closed form antiderivative. of e to the negative x squared. But here's what I can do. If I want to approximate the integral of e to the negative x squared, I can just integrate each piece. So that would be the integral of this, of 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over 2 factorial minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial plus x to the 8 over 4 factorial minus dot, 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 dx. So we don't, have, we don't have that closed form of the antiderivative, but I am able to go ahead and construct an antiderivative using the Taylor series. That's one of the best concepts or one of the best applications we have of a Taylor series. Uh, help me out with this. If I make any errors, please tell me. We're going to add c. So we're going to say c plus rather than plus c at the end. Integral of 1 is x minus integral of x squared would be x cubed over 3 plus integral of x to the 4th, x to the 5th over 5 times 2 factorial. Integral of x to the 6th would be x to the 7th over 7 times 3 factorial, plus integral of x to the 8th is x to the 9 over 9 times 4 factorial minus dot, dot, dot. You can go as far as you want to go, and you could indeed express this using a a sigma notation, but I think that's getting pretty ambitious. So I'm not going to force you to quite go all the way that far. But that is our antiderivative for e to the negative x squared written in that form, but we don't have a nice name of a function for that. It's not something easy for us to work with.
So we've looked at the Taylor series for e to the x. We developed the Taylor series for cosine x. So another one of our favorites is the Taylor series for sine x. Let me go ahead and give you that and see if you can construct the sigma notation. So here we go. Here is what sine x is. Sine x are odd powers. So it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the 9 over 9 factorial minus dot, dot, dot. Let me ask you to go ahead and construct a sigma notation for this. So we're looking for sine of x is the sum of something. So see what you can do. See if you can construct the uh, sigma notation form for this Taylor series. See what you can do. Taylor series centered at zero. So I'll give you a minute to think about that, and then I'll put the answer up on the board. We have odd powers. We're going to again start at k equals zero. So we're going to go k goes from zero to infinity of what? Odd powers. Odd powers typically are 2k. Plus one, and again, interval of convergence is all real numbers here, by the way. So we have 2k plus one factorial downstairs. So starting at zero, two times zero, zero plus one, one factorial. Two times one is two, two plus one is three, three factorial. Two times two is four, four plus one is five, five factorial. Odd powers upstairs, x to the odd powers. So x to the 2k plus one upstairs. And then we're gonna have our sine flasher. So our sine flasher is what? Our sine flasher starts out positive, so it'll be negative one to the, if we're starting at zero though, I guess that's negative one to the K. I always have to think about this one. Negative one to the zero, it starts out positive, negative one to the first, then it's negative three. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So there is our expression for that. And let me ask you guys to evaluate the following. Put your answer on the comment list, please. And I trust everyone's going to get this one right because I am confident. All right, so see what you can do. See if you can figure out what that sum will be by appealing to the McLaurin series, Taylor series centered at zero for sine x. Write your answers in the comments when you get there. Pi over two is certainly relevant, but remember what our function is. Our function is sine of x equals that. So pi over two is a good hint. Michael says sine pi over two. Do we know what sine pi over two is? I hope so. Maddie says one, and I think that's right, indeed. So let's go ahead and rewriting this out. So as k goes from zero to infinity, negative one to the k, pi over two to the two k plus one, over two k plus one factorial. That is just what? That is just sine of pi over two. which equals one. All right. Uh, we've looked at the Taylor series for sine x, for e to the x, and for cosine x. There's one other one that is very nice for us to look at, and I think I might have talked about this in my last video, but let's just go ahead and remind ourselves of what that is to add that to our collection of things that we know and want to work with. And that's natural log x. 
So if I have f of x is natural log x, and my goal this time is to get a Taylor series centered at 1, we cannot get a Taylor series centered at 0 because, again, the function is not defined at 0. So we're going to construct a Taylor series centered at 1. And I have an entire video on this problem. But what that means is that the Taylor series will be something like this. I'll call it a polynomial for now. It's going to be a naught plus a1 times x minus 1 plus a2 times x minus 1 squared plus a3 times x minus 1 cubed. If we make it a Taylor series, it goes on forever and never stops. But what can we say about this? Well, I showed you a little trick last time, namely that if f of x is natural log x, f prime of x is 1 over x. Now, remember, we have for a geometric series, this was the thing we talked about last time. For a geometric series, our infinite sum, our infinite sum is going to be the first term over 1 minus the common ratio as long as the absolute value of that common ratio is less than 1. So the strategy I showed you last time was to say f prime of x is 1 over x minus 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 1 plus x minus 1, which has an initial term now of 1 and a common ratio of negative x minus 1. So knowing that, what are we going to say? We're going to say f prime of x is 1 minus x minus 1 multiplied by another x minus 1 will be plus x minus 1 squared minus x minus 1 to the third plus x minus 1 to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. That's f prime of x. So to get f of x, I have to integrate, add c plus c, integral of 1 is x minus integral of x minus 1, x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 minus x minus 1 to the fourth over 4 minus x minus 1 to the fifth over 5 plus dot, dot, dot. Now remember, what was f of x? f of x was the natural log of x. So what I have now is, is I have the natural log of x equals c plus all of this stuff. We have to quickly find uh, what C is, but that's going to be easy for us to do. Because what are we going to say? <clears throat> Zero is the natural log of one. So if I replace one for all of my x's, I get C plus one, and then that's zero, and that's zero, and that's zero, and that's zero. So if C plus one is zero, which is what I have here, C plus one is zero, that tells me C is negative one, which kind of finishes the picture for me. So that gives me my Taylor series for natural log x. It's negative one plus x, which I will write as x minus one, minus x minus one squared over two, plus x minus one to the third over three, minus x minus one to the fourth over four, minus something's wrong, one of these has changed, minus that's plus, that's fixed, plus, plus, uh, plus x minus 1 to the fifth over 5 minus dot, dot, dot. So the next challenge I'm going to give you is to express that in sigma form. So see what you can do. See if you can express that function for natural log x in sigma form. And then we'll see what that looks like. So I'll give you a minute or two to think about that. Notice the exponents and the denominators match. So, so far today we've done Taylor series centered at zero for e to the x, sine x, and cos x. Here we're going to do a Taylor series centered at one for natural log x. And see if there is some way for us to express that in sigma notation. 
I believe we have done the interval of convergence before. If not, it's on a video you can watch. What do we have? Natural log of x equals the sum x minus 1 to the first over 1, x minus 1 to the second over 2, x minus 1 to the third over 3, x minus 1 to the fourth over 4, x minus 1 to the fifth over 5. So we get x minus 1 to the k over k as k starts where? k starts at 1 this time. And then we need to think about what our sine flasher is going to be. It starts out positive. So when k is 1, negative 1 to the first would be negative. So I've got to bump it up by 1. So I'll say that the natural log of x is negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x minus 1 to the k over k. All right. One last thing I want to look at. Um, let's construct a Taylor polynomial Construct a Taylor polynomial. Uh, let's pick an order of order 5 for g of x equals e to the x times sine x. Now, if we would take all those derivatives, right, f of x or g of x is e to the x sine x, what's g prime, g double prime, g triple prime, g quadruple prime, that's going to get messy very, very quickly. But if we know the Taylor series, we can multiply those Taylor series together to get ourselves a Taylor polynomial of order 5. Let me show you what I mean by that. So we know what the Taylor series is for e to the x. We know what the Taylor series is for sine x. We're going to write down the first few terms and figure out some way to multiply them together. So I have e to the x, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial. So that goes out to order 5 for e to the x. And then how about sine x? How do I go out to order 5 for sine x? Sine x are the odd powers alternating. So it starts x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial. We want to multiply these together. How do we do term by term multiplication to get there? Now you'll notice, if we multiply this piece, x to the fifth times x to the first, that gives me x to the sixth, that's more than I need. So I only need to use the terms up to x to the fourth to get up to x to the fifth. So how do I multiply these together? What tool am I gonna to use to multiply these together? I'm gonna to go ahead and use a multiplication box. And I hope you're able to follow this. So we have x here. Here we have, that's what, a sixth, negative a sixth. And a fifth, what is that? Uh, 120, I believe, right? 5 times 24, 120. 1 120th x to the fifth. So that's up through x to the fifth sign on the up and down part of this box. Then I have one, then I have x, then I have x squared over two, x cubed over six. Looks like I need a little bigger box. x to the fourth over 24, and x to the fifth over 120. So you just multiply these things together and add them all up. So I get 1 times x is x, 1 times negative a sixth x cubed is negative a sixth x cubed, 1 times 120th, 1 120th x to the fifth, x times x is x squared, negative 6 x cubed times x is x to the fourth. I'm not going to worry about this because this gives me x to the sixth. So I'm just going to ignore that because I'm only going up to x to the fifth x squared over 2 times x is x cubed over 2, so 1 half x cubed. Uh, negative a sixth times a half, negative 1 twelfth, x to the fifth. This gives me x to the seventh. I don't care. I'm not going to go that far. 1 sixth x cubed times x is 1 sixth x to the fourth, 
This gives me x to the sixth. That's more than I want to go. x to the fourth over 24 times x is 1 24th x to the fifth. That's too big. That's too big. I already said this was too big. And we've done it. We have written out our uh, a Taylor polynomial of order 5 for e to the x times sine x. Remember, we're multiplying together e to the x times sine x. So the Taylor polynomial of order 5 of x, where's my constant term? Just 1. Check. Squared. They only have 1 squared. That's right here. That's x squared. So that's good. We've taken care of that box. Where are my cubes? I have a cube here and a cube here. So a half minus a sixth. I'm not going to do any fractions here since we're at the end of our time. A half minus six x cubed. You certainly could do that. Where are my x to the fourths? I have a sixth x to the fourth and negative a sixth x to the fourth, which is obviously zero, but a six minus a six x to the fourth. And then my x to the fifth, guys, what do I have? I have 1 24th x to the fifth. I have minus a 12th x to the fifth. And I have plus 120th x to the fifth. That is a fifth order Taylor polynomial for e to the x sine x that we get by multiplying that stuff together. And I sincerely hope I have not made an error in doing that computation. Okay, so, you know, here's where we are. You guys took an exam on Wednesday. We are grading as much of it as we can before the teaching assistants come back. So, you know, stay tuned to your email to see what kind of results you have. I know some people are deciding whether or not to drop the class. I certainly would suggest that you stay, if at all possible, and try to turn things around on the next exam if you need to. Um, spring break is here. So I'm glad you watched the video today. I will upload a homework set at some point tomorrow that you may want to get done before spring break. It'll be due at some point after spring break. So I will talk with the team to determine where that should be. Um, on the final, should we expect to see problems of this same type? This last one on the final, yeah, I think that's possible. It doesn't take you very long to do. You have to keep in mind, we can only give you questions that are so long. You've got to be able to finish that exam in two hours. So typically speaking, we tend to give you problems that can be done fairly quickly. Uh, but there's no doubt about it. Taylor series, Taylor polynomials are long problems, take a long time to do. So yeah, keep that in mind as you're getting ready for your final. The final consists of everything. So we've had two exams so far. Uh, so the final exam is going to include stuff from those two exams, plus all the new things we're going to cover. Class is going to change. We're kind of done with our series stuff. So after spring break, we will uh, hit some new material. And at the end of the semester, we do some work on linear algebra. So that will also be a little different. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. Have a nice spring break. Be safe. And thank you so much for joining me live tonight and participating. I really appreciate it. Take care.